Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem car pooling. There's a car that has a certain capacity. It can only drive east. So let's just say it can only drive right. It can't turn around and it can't go in any other direction, which is good because that's gonna make things simple for us. We're also given an array called trips, where each trip represents a number of passengers and a starting point and an ending point. So basically it means that we have to pick up this many passengers from this starting point and then take them to this ending point and then we can drop them off. Now we could be given a bunch of trips and each of these trips is gonna have a certain starting point and they could actually be given in any order as you can see. But remember our car can only drive east. So in the order that we're gonna be picking these up in is going to matter. You can see that this has a starting point of one, this has a starting point of three. So of course we would have to do this trip or at least pick up two passengers from this trip before we can pick up these three passengers and we have to make sure that we don't go over our capacity. In this case, these two are sorted based on the starting point, but that's not always going to be the case, so it probably will be good for us to sort them based on the starting point ourselves. And after sorting, it, the problem actually becomes pretty straightforward because we can actually just run a simulation because we know we definitely can't skip any trips because the goal of the problem is to return true if we can uh, pick up and drop off every single passenger and false if we can't. So we can't skip any of them. So after sorting it, we'll just go left to right and basically keep track of how many passengers we have at any given point and make sure that it doesn't ever go over our capacity. If it does, then we have to return false. If it doesn't and we can do every trip, then we can return true. So pretty straightforward. The only question is how are we actually gonna implement this with code? So let's say we're keeping track of our current number of passengers so far. Initially, it's gonna be zero. We go to the first position in the array. Again, we're gonna be sorting this. Right now, it's already in sorted order. So we see that there's two passengers that we're gonna be picking up from position one. We're gonna be dropping them off at position five, but for now, we don't really have to worry about that. So the current number of passengers is gonna be two. Next, we're going to get to the next uh, position based on the starting point, it's three, and we need to pick up three more passengers. The question is the current passengers that we have, have we dropped them off yet or have we not dropped them off yet? Well, we remember that we're gonna drop them off at position five and right now we're at position three. So we haven't dropped them off yet. So let's run through a slightly different example than the one that they have over here. So initially we're going to have our current passengers be zero. We're gonna have the array sorted based on the starting point of each of the trips, which right now it is sorted. We know that's of course gonna take a log n log n to do that, so keep that in mind. We're gonna to get to the first trip. There's two passengers, we're at a starting point of one. So we're gonna take our current passengers, increment it to two. Next, we're gonna to get to the next trip. There's one passenger at a starting point of two. So we can add one to the capacity. But before you even do that, how do we know that these two current passengers haven't already been dropped off yet? Well, they were supposed to be dropped off at position five, and right now we're at position two. So they haven't been dropped off yet. But it's easy to tell when we're just comparing two trips, but as we add more and more trips, it's not gonna be so simple for us to just confirm that. We would have to go through all previous values in the array of trips, which in the worst case is gonna be big O of N. But there is a better way to do this. I'll show you when we get to the next trip. But for now, we're gonna take the one passenger to our current uh, number of passengers and add it. So right now we're gonna have three passengers. Okay, so now we get to the third and final trip. There's three passengers, we're at the position three, and if we try to add three to the current number of passengers, we're gonna get six. That's gonna be greater than our capacity, which I'm gonna say is four for this example. But again, how do we know that we haven't dropped off any of the previous three passengers? We don't, we would have to go through the entire array to figure that out. But we, instead of going through the array, we can be adding these trips to a heap, in this case, a min heap. And instead of uh, having to look through the entire array, which would be an O of N algorithm, using a heap, that would be reduced to log N, which is more efficient. Now, which one of these three values are we gonna use as the key for our heap? 
Well, we probably want to use the ending position of the trip because we know that the smallest ending position is going to be the trip that finishes first. So we know that this one passenger, since this trip ends at position three, we know this one passenger is going to be dropped off before these two passengers because they're being dropped off at position five. So we're actually gonna add a pair of values to our heap. One is gonna be the ending position, which is really gonna be the key for the heap. And the second is gonna be the number of passengers. So that we know once we pop that from our min heap, we can take that number of passengers, say that they've been dropped off so we can decrement our capacity by that much. So suppose we have a heap like that. Well, right now we are at position three. So we're gonna look at our heap. We're gonna look at the smallest value and see, okay, this uh, trip ends at position three. So we're already at position three. So that means this one passenger has been dropped off. So that means our current number of passengers is actually equal to two. And then we're gonna continue doing that. Maybe we've also completed this trip as well. So we're gonna take a look at the heap now that this has been popped from the min heap. We're gonna look at this trip since it's the only one left. Well, it gets dropped off at a position of five. Right now we're at a position of three. So this trip has not been completed. These two passengers are not dropped off yet. So we have three more passengers to add to our current number of passengers. If we do two plus three, that's gonna be five. That's greater than the current capacity. So in this case, we have to return false. But if, if we did not exceed the capacity, suppose that instead of a three uh, over here, we had a two, then we'd have four and that does not exceed the capacity. So in that case, we would have returned true. So I really hope that you start to get the idea of this algorithm. The time complexity comes from the sorting, which we know is gonna be n log n, and this heap solution that's gonna run after that is also gonna be n log n, because in the worst case, we're gonna add every single trip to the min heap and pop it from the min heap. So that's gonna be the overall big O time complexity. Space complexity is gonna be big O of n because of the heap. Okay, now let's code it up. So now let's code it up, and remember we're going to first sort the trips. Uh, we know that the trip has three values associated with it. So which one of the three are we actually going to sort by? Well, in Python, you can use a lambda function. So suppose it were passed in a trip. I'm going to call it T for short. We're going to sort based on the starting position. That's going to be at index one of the trip. Then we're going to have a min heap. Initially, it's going to be empty, but we know that this is intended to store a pair of two values. One is going to be the starting position, and second is going to be the number of passengers. And we're also gonna be maintaining, of course, the current number of passengers so that we know if we ever exceed the capacity. Then we're just gonna go ahead and iterate through our sorted list of trips. So what we want to do is take the current trip and add the number of passengers to our current number of passengers, right? We know that at index zero is the current number of passengers of that trip. And actually to make it a little bit cleaner, let's actually put it into a few variables. We know that a trip T has three values associated with it. So let's actually call them what they are. And we're gonna add the number of passengers of the trip to the current number of passengers. But before we even do that, we should ask ourselves, have any of the previous trips been completed? Initially, of course, the min heap is gonna be empty, but at some point, the heap might not be empty. So before we do this operation, we should check while the heap is non-empty and the top of the heap uh, at index zero, which is gonna have the minimum start value, and we want index zero because we know the value in each heap is gonna have a start and a number of passengers. We want the starting position. So we get the starting position at index zero and we say, if this is less than or equal to the current position that we're at, which is going to be the starting position of the current trip. So if this is the case, that means this trip that was added to the heap has now been completed. Oh, by the way, it's not called heap, it's called min heap. Let me not make that mistake. So if this trip has been completed, we can take the current number of passengers and decrement the number of passengers from that trip that's been completed. We can get that at min heap, index zero, at index one, because that's gonna have the number of passengers. And after doing that, don't forget to actually pop from the heap. You can do that in Python like this, heap q dot heap pop from the min heap. And we're gonna keep doing that while there, there are some trips that have been completed. After they're not, then we're going to take the number of passengers of the current trip, add them to the current number of passengers, but we wanna make sure that this has not exceeded our capacity. 
If it has exceeded the capacity, then we have to return false. If it hasn't though, then we can continue. But remember, this is a current trip, so we should add it to our min heap. So heap q uh, in Python to uh, push to a heap, you can do heap q dot heap push to the min heap. Uh, what pair of values are we going to do? Remember, we're going to add the starting position and the number of passengers. So let's do exactly that. Start and num pass, which is number of passengers. And then that's pretty much it. Then we're going to continue to the next iteration of the loop. If we get through every single trip without exceeding the capacity, then we can go ahead and return uh, true, not false. Okay, really sorry about that. I had a really stupid mistake. When we have this pair that we're adding to the min heap, we don't care about the start value of that pair. We care about the end value because we want to know which trips have been completed. We know they've been completed based on the end value of that trip. So in our while loop here, if you take the end value and it's less than or equal to the start value of the current trip, that means that this trip has been completed and then we can pop from it. Similarly, when we push to the heap, we're not gonna be pushing the start value of the current trip. We're gonna be pushing the end value because that's how we're gonna know when the trip has been completed. Really sorry about that. I know I explained it correctly in the drawing explanation, but sorry if the code was confusing. Now let's run it to make sure that it works. And as you can see on the left, yes, it does. And it's very efficient, but it's technically not the most efficient solution because there's actually kind of a tricky and kind of dumb, in my opinion, solution that's more efficient. There is technically a big O of N solution, but it's one of those problems where you actually have to look at the limitations and restrictions of the inputs. So if you look on the left hand side, you can see that there are some restrictions and the most important one is that the starting and ending positions are going to be between 0 and 1000. We can use this to pretty much brute force this solution. We can iterate through every position from 0 to 1000 and then check at any point from 0 to 1000 have we exceeded the capacity. We can do that easier than you might think actually because we can take from position 0 to 1000, we can keep track of how uh, the number of passengers has changed at any given point in time. So initially, the change in passengers is going to be 0 for every single position, but we're going to iterate through every single trip in our list of trips. We're going to get the number of passengers, the starting and the ending position from that trip, and we're going to say the change in passengers at this point at the starting point is going to be positive because the number of passengers we have is going to increase because we're gonna pick up this many passengers at this starting point. But we also know, I'm gonna copy and paste here because we also know at this position, at this ending position, we're going to drop off these passengers. So we're gonna decrement the change in passengers at you know whatever time this happens, at uh, whatever position this happens to be by this much. If we do that for every single trip, we're going to have basically every single change in passengers. Then here comes the brute force, which is technically big O of N because we're only going to run it, what, a thousand times. We're going to iterate through every single position from zero to 1000. We're going to keep track of our current number of passengers, which initially is going to be zero. And for every single position, we're just going to update our current number of passengers by just taking the passenger change at this position I. And then we're just going to brute force check, has this exceeded the capacity? If it has, we return false. If it hasn't, then we can continue doing the algorithm. And if it never exceeds the capacity, similarly as the previous solution, we're just going to return true. So this is almost too simple of a solution, which is kind of why it's hard to come up with. How many people are going to read the fine print of the problem statement? I definitely don't. But I think in a real interview setting, if your interview asked you, compared to the n log n solution, can you somehow do better than that? I think a good question to ask them then would be, what are the input restrictions of the problem? Like, are the starting and ending positions going to be limited? It's not the type of thing you would think of, but hopefully this has kind of opened your mind to that idea. Let's run this to make sure that it works though. And as you can see on the left, yes it does and it's about as efficient. So I really hope that this was helpful. If it was, please like and subscribe. It really supports the channel a lot. Consider checking out my Patreon where you can further support the channel and hopefully I'll see you pretty soon. Thanks for watching.